Good morning, friends. It is Thursday morning. So it is like not even 8 a.m. yet. And I got up around 6. I spent some time um, with Bubba's and uh, Stephen just woke up. And yeah, it was like a very quiet morning. I did my devotions. Um, today I did some reading out of Corinthians. Really <laughs> timely. And it was a lot about like caring for your body and things like that, which I thought was just um, something that's been on my mind lately. So... It just felt like you always get the message that you're supposed to get at the right time. I just think it's like the universe always working. But um, I started today the Becoming Journal from Michelle Obama. And I'm not going to lie, I ended up crying a little bit. Um, and sometimes, I, not sometimes, I think there are like moments in my content where I feel like I hold back maybe more than usual because I get so many comments that you come for like a place of positivity and joy and love and kindness and a break from it all. But I also think there's lots of love and kindness that happen in moments of like vulnerability and maybe even a little bit of pain. And I think that's something we should recognize a little bit more that sometimes in those toughest moments is where the love and uh, kindness can kind of come to the surface a little bit more. So I did the first entry today and it is, what is your story and what have you learned from it? So I'm gonna go ahead and share what I wrote and I literally didn't think about it. And I don't know if I necessarily told my story, but for me, I found a lot of peace in this and I'm hoping that it maybe resonates with one of you and connects with you in some way. And I'd love for you guys to answer the same question, like, what is your story and what has it taught you? My story is one of a bullied, overweight, gay kid. My school years, to say the least, were tough. You know, the words said to a person really seep in and become a part of who they are until they can find the strength to overcome and face it. For years I battled and felt I had put them past me. I thought I had really beaten the demons. But the last 12 months, I feel like in some ways, and if I'm totally honest, many ways, those words and feelings have bubbled back up to the surface. I hear a lot of negative words going through my brain, daily, hourly, perhaps even by the minute, that are reminiscent of the things I heard as a teenager. What I've learned in this work is that it's never truly over. When you think you've conquered it, most likely it will arise again. I believe I've learned to not let down my guard, to keep working to overcome the pain and learn behaviors of my past, and to seek to know myself deeper and to learn to adjust my coping strategies. Start now, don't wait. You are too precious, Christopher. I think, um, we all have those parts of our stories that are really painful that we work to overcome and we just think like once you've beaten it, you've beaten it. And I do know that I kind of let my guard down. I thought I had conquered it. I went years and years and years feeling so good. And I think that lately it's really bubbled to the surface. I also don't know if it's maybe manifested itself stronger just because of the for lack of a better word, the isolation we faced the last 70 some days. Uh, but, or maybe it's not even that, maybe it's just that the 70 some days have allowed me to really sit with my own thoughts a lot more. That they've always been there, but I've been able to distract myself with work and everything else. But I, I think sometimes we think we've conquered it, but the work that we have to do within ourselves is never actually over. I also think we don't adjust our coping strategies. And at some point, just like any medication, your body becomes used to it and it loses its effectiveness. So really trying to like reevaluate what am I using to cope and deal with and to work through. So that's where I'm at. I, it's a journey. It's learning a little bit more about yourself every day and seeing where you can improve. But like, I definitely have felt in a different space recently um well actually not that recent for the last couple months so gonna work through it 
gonna get through it and going to be a better person on the other side of it. I think so oftentimes I am a people pleaser and will do so much more for others and I don't always take my own advice of like, put your mask on before you help others. So I think that's one thing I have to really gain plan around and be thoughtful about and yeah, you need a plan. So that is how my morning has started. It's been quiet and reflective and really helpful. Um, the day is relatively busy. Like I said, it's not even 8 a.m. I start Zoom at 9. Um, I have some work I have to get done before then. But I start at 9 and I don't end on Zoom until after 4. So like I am literally going to be sitting on my computer so I'm not going to be filming. I'll probably film like a little lunch break somewhere in the middle. Hopefully I get one because I'm actually like scheduled to be in a meeting from 10 to 2.30. Um, but I'm sure we'll have like a lunch break or working time in between there. Maybe I can film something. But for the most part, most of the filming is going to happen once my work day is over. So that's what's going on. I posted on my Instagram about the digital planner. I'm telling you, I love it so much. So this is my day today. So I have my big goals, my extra goals, um, my little workout, and then my daily schedule for today. And then what I'm doing, and what's great is you can zoom in. So like I'm making little notes. So I have to move my workout later because I have an earlier Zoom call that I missed in my Outlook. And then I wrote, wrote like the temperature today. I wrote a little bit of detail about my devotion. I've already gone into my, I've already gone into my habit tracker today and tracked some of my habits. Um, I'm obsessed with this thing. Oh, and then, hold on, let me go back to today. Today is the 14th. Is it the 14th? Yes, it's Thursday the 14th. And then, this is also like the daily, like just draft page where you can do anything. So I'm capturing pictures that I'm grateful for and I already went in and I captured mornings that are quiet, slow and peaceful. Um, I'm loving it. Steven's up, he's taking Bubba's for a walk. Although Bubba's is in the dining room. You're going the wrong way, sir. Hey, you're going the wrong way. Oh, going the wrong way. Get your life together. Oh, it's... Oh. So don't, even, don't even say where we're going. This could be... Wait, how does he know already? I don't... I haven't told him. I said we're going for a walk. We're going for a walk. He um, knows you're not telling him the truth. Let's go for a walk. Come on. Bubba's is actually not going for a walk. He's going to the vet. Um, Steven's a little bit nervous about the handoff at the vet because uh, Bubba's doesn't do very well when he's separated from us. So... <laughs> We talked to him about it yesterday, so maybe he's remembered that it's happening. So he's going to the vet. Steven is also going to attempt to give him a haircut today because no dog groomers are open. Our vet is going to clip his nails though for him. But uh, Bubba's has been licking his paws a lot. Like some of the front ones, he's even licked some of the fur away. We've done a lot of research. We don't know if it's like joint pain and arthritis. He is a much older dog. So we want the vet to check that out. And it's also just his um, six month checkup anyway. We're really good at him going to the vet often and staying really healthy. And um, he also has had some health issues. So we're just trying to make him as comfortable and take as good care of him as we can in his old age of 13. But um, we are going to just have a regular work day. Steven after this vet is actually really swamped today. Like I said, I'm swamped today and we will catch up somewhere in the break time uh, this afternoon and then hopefully uh, we'll pick up in the evening and I actually forgot to plan dinner tonight but I have some naan. I think I'm going to go old school and make a yellow curry with whatever vegetables I still have in the pantry and just like empty it out. Use the potatoes, use some chickpeas and just like toss some things together and make it work. Maybe throw the leftover green beans in. We'll figure it all out. So that is what's going on. I hope that this video is finding you well. I hope uh, you're already sparked to start thinking about some things. And all right, my friends, we're gonna make it a great day. We can control what we can control. And what I can, can control is how I go about this day. And I'm going to go about it with a positive attitude. 
about myself and about the work that I'm doing and um, give everything all of my focus and all my intentions, so. All right, I am ready for the day. I'm wearing this shirt from Old Navy, um, a pair of jeans and just a long cardigan because it's a little chilly in the house. Um, yeah, we're going to get this day going with lots of meetings. One thing that Steven and I have really been enjoying is on Spotify. Um, we've just been playing like spa music and just letting that go while we're both working all day. Um, I like having the background noise. Also, check out our new coffee table. This is from our house. We wanted something for this space that was a little bit more modern and fun because we like combining pieces and it feel like a little more eclectic and not like all bought from a showroom or all the same style. What we particularly liked about this one is it actually kind of incorporates all the wood tones in the house and ties them. So there's some really dark, there's some more gray, some more brown. Um, we're really happy with it. Refrigerator is beeping. And then in here, I have the travel size Illuminate Life Focus Candle. I like burning a candle next to my desk while I'm working. Uh, I have a home office upstairs, but I've been using this as like my work office and I've really been enjoying it. Got my water, I'm ready to go for the day. And I actually usually only put this away on the weekends. I've been putting it away every night to disconnect from work. Um, and actually with the dining room being redone, I don't, I don't like it to look messy in the evening. So, all right, I will catch you all when I have a chance. It is five o'clock and I'm just wrapping up the day. It's been a long one. I'm in comfortable clothes now. Um, but I got to connect with some of my friends in the city and in Newark and just check in with them and then also get some work done. But um, it's been a very long day. I know it's time to make Steven and I dinner. Um, I'm gonna change up the curry a little bit, um, but I'll show you what I did. I knew today was gonna be really long, so during my lunch break, I, they gave us 30 minutes. Um, so I had 30 minutes today where I wasn't working. Um, I went ahead and got everything out that I would need. I even opened up the can of tomatoes. I went and cooked two chicken breasts and diced them up and they're there. I have some parsley. I'm gonna change up what I was originally going to do. I left my pan out as well because it has all the good brown bits from the chicken. I'm just going to get some olive oil going in here first. So I have a base going of garlic and uh, shallot, about four cloves of garlic, they weren't very large, and two shallots that were pretty small. I don't have fresh ginger on hand, um, so I am adding a bunch, well whatever I have left of this um, ground ginger. I find it's not nearly as potent, so I don't know if we'll actually really be able to taste it much. Everyone, um, well not everyone, a few of you guys asked about my dishes or pans and stuff that I cook with. All of my cookware is La Creuset. Um, I'll leave link down below um, some of my favorite La Creuset pieces. They are expensive, I'm not gonna like avoid that. Um, but I will tell you, they last forever, they clean up really well, and I have been very happy with them. I'm just gonna let this cook, and as it's cooking, I'm gonna try to break up some of these little bits of brown, because that's where so much flavor lies. Um, see how that's coming off? And get that loosened up within the oil. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what other spices I'm going to add to this. That has been going, I got a lot of like, look at all the, goodness and all those dark brown chicken pieces that will just add so much flavor. Now we're going to add some spices. This is a kata masala daba. Um, it's a Indian spice tin. It's where I keep all my Indian spices. I make curry a lot. Uh, so we're going to add a lot of, oh, I just spilled all those. I just filled those up this week. I'm gonna add a lot of cumin seed. I'm gonna add these seeds first because I really want them to bloom a little bit. I'm also going to add fennel. Steven and I really like fennel. I know it is like a, it's a preferred taste, but we both really like fennel. I'm just gonna add one little spoonful of coriander seed as well. I have coriander powder, but I really like how the seeds bloom. So those more pod-like spices, I'm gonna actually cook those 
in this oil because it will really toast them up, um, make their flavor a lot more vibrant. Um, and just kind of let those go a little bit with the ginger, shallot, and garlic. Okay, those have had about three minutes to um, bloom. Once again, I have no recipe, so don't ask for one. Just pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, this is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomato. I am going to add all of that. And give this a good, healthy stir. Get everything mixed together. This will also help get any remaining little brown bits off the bottom of the pan. You can see that they're like all gone now. Liquid will always do that. And then you can just break up those other pieces. All right, now that we got a sauce in it, now is when I add like the powdery um, uh, spices. So I'm gonna put probably two big heaping spoonfuls of turmeric in here. I'm gonna do two huge spoonfuls of paprika. Um, I don't use mustard seed when I use red curry. I only use that when I'm doing like a yellow or green curry. And then this is garam masala. I'm going to add two big spoonfuls of that. I actually might do two and a half. I go through garam masala like nobody's business. All right, now that those powders are in, I'm just going to give these a really good stir and get them all incorporated into the tomato sauce. And I have this on low, by the way. I'm gonna heat it up really, really slowly, um, just so it has a little bit more time to infuse. You can see how the color is already, I don't know if it shows up on camera so much, the color's already gotten so much richer. The smell is amazing. One thing I haven't added is any salt and pepper. I won't add that until the very end. Now, as far as a curry powder, I have a couple different options. So I always have this filled with curry powder. This is like a very basic, classic curry powder. Um, during Vlogmas, uh, a subscriber sent me curry spices from her favorite um, curry or spice market in Oakland, California. It's called Oak Town. I've since gone through all the ones she sent me, so I've reordered several. I think this is probably the third time I've ordered since Vlogmas, because that's how often I make curry. Love them all. I would say the Jamaican curry is a little bit smokier. The Japanese curry is a little bit more mild. I really like the Madra, the Madras curry. That's the one we're going to use today. So I'm going to add about two heaping teaspoons of the Madras curry into the tomato mixture. So um, mixed in the curry powder. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. You can see how the colors really changed. Um, it's been simmering for about five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna let it go about 10 more minutes, but I am gonna keep stirring it because it will thicken up really quick. You don't want it burning. Um, so I'm gonna keep it on as low as my gas burner can go. Just keep moving it around. Once it's kind of bubbled and simmered for a while, all the flavors have had a chance to meld together. Then I'm just going to hit it with a can of coconut milk. Um, and then probably a little squirt of honey to sweeten it up a little bit, cut the acidity of the tomatoes a little, and that will be that. And then I'll add my chicken, heat it through, heat up the naan on top of the gas burner, top it with a little parsley because they don't have cilantro, a little lime, and we're gonna call it a day. I'll make some microwave jasmine rice. And that's gonna be our dinner. And then I made a lot of extra curry for the amount of chicken I made. I only made two breasts. Um, so I might actually put some of this aside. Here's a tip, if you make home, well not just, any curry is really good. Throw this with some french fries, so good. Um, put it on top of burger instead of ketchup. I will like use it as a regular condiment. So it's, oh. I literally, this is our favorite food. Curry of any kind is Stephen and I's like go-to favorite. All right, that's the plan. I'll show you when we're all done. So here is dinner. I have the fan on because I just done the naan on the gas burner. Do not heat your naan up in a microwave or a tortilla. Always do them on the gas burner, so much better flavor. But here's the final product. Here's his dinner. And here is Bubby's dinner. <gasps> oh, it looks delicious. 
grain free turkey dog food. I'd rather have this. All right, we're gonna enjoy dinner and a glass of wine. All right, my friends, so we finished dinner. Babe, how was dinner? What? How was dinner? I told you it was good. I liked it. It was, it was really good. He liked dinner, so it went well. Um, he did not uh, get any curry. Too spicy. Um, and I'm just gonna decompress and actually do my uh, digital planner um, to unwind with a glass of wine and kind of prep for tomorrow because tomorrow's another really busy day. Uh, I'm not gonna do like an official plan with me, but that's going to come. I'm definitely going to incorporate that. But right now I just need a time to decompress because it's going on six o'clock and I've not like just had time for me. Um, so I'm gonna use this for myself. I did wanna hop on here really quick to show you something really cool. So there is this lasso tool. Um, so I have it set right now. And this is what I love about this. So this didn't get done today. So what I'm going to do is simply lasso it. I'm gonna hit copy. And I said I have to move it to Friday. So now I'm at Friday. And I'm literally gonna put my pen down, hit paste, and look at that. I just lassoed it over to Friday. So it's easy to move things back and forth. Even if I want to take this whole section. So let's say I want to take this whole section for tomorrow. Copy. I'm going to slide over to my section. I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to hit paste. I have that whole piece that I can just add right there. Oops, sorry. That's how amazing this is. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. I don't think I'll go back to a planner system for a while. I'm finding this so relaxing. I just thought I'd share that really quick tip. I am going to do a whole sit down video when I get a chance, but I, I love it. I love it. I wrapped up my planner for today. So here was my little gratitude reflection. Also like kind of worked as a journal. Then this is my schedule for tomorrow. And then lastly, I set up tomorrow. Little journaling page is going to capture pictures of all the things that make me happy. So, all set. I didn't get a chance to get this workout in. I still might try. All right. My friends, this is, this is the way to go with planning. All right, I'm going to turn this off. And... Just relax. It is 6.42 and I'm going upstairs to bed. <laughs> this is what the vlog is today, but I hope it resonated with some of you um, and I hope you enjoyed some of it. And yeah, um, this is what life is like working from home. And once again, just take care of yourself and take care of others and just be kind to people. Even when it's hard, just be kind because everyone just needs it. And remember, whatever you're feeling is okay. So take care of yourself, take care of others. Be kind, it's free, give it to everyone. Until next time, bye-bye.